This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Good afternoon everybody, welcome on the afternoon drive, we're here at Juma Private Game Reserve, I've got Darby on the camera, how are you all doing? Hello. We're just hanging out with some warthogs here, there's quite a, quite a smorgasbord of game out here on quarantine this afternoon. <clears throat> we want to go down and check Juma Dam, see what's happening there, see if we can catch up to that herd of buffalo that Chris had this morning. Please remember to send through any comments and questions that you have using the hashtag Wild Earth on Twitter, at FC on YouTube, and if you're under the age of 18, pop us a mail on kidsquestions at wildearth.tv. You can um, register on the Wild Earth website, head over to the live safari page and you can submit your questions there. <laughs> the little pig hopping there. The one that's back on the right looks tiny. Yes, they are cute little things. Those little ones look like little hot dogs. Um, there was a question this morning if leopards preferred impala or warthogs. I think a leopard would definitely like one of those little piglets. Thanks, Paul. I'm sure we're going to have a great afternoon. They are cute, man. <laughs> We're going to stay with these warthogs. <clears throat> We're going to have a look at the weather that we are experiencing this afternoon. Partly cloudy, yet nice and hot and sunny. And our plan is to scout around for some elephants and then perhaps later on see if there's anything happening at the Hina Den. My name is Chris, and with me today, Camops, is again BK. And we are now in the western, northern reaches of Juma, and we're gonna just slowly, slowly work our way south. Go through a couple of water holes, look at a couple of birds, hopefully find some elephants, and then anything for that matter. And then uh, maybe head down to the inner den a little bit later. It's quiet this morning, so I'm holding thumbs that uh, it will it will actually help. So that's our direction that we're going to go into. So let's head out. <laughs> Jonty is going to try and find that herd of buffalo that we saw this morning. And um, I'm going to still just, there's something that bothers me about those line tracks that were seen. I didn't see anything in that region. Along our plan is to head past that. 
and then just figure out what's happening there. It's confusing reports. And then obviously, hopefully, there'll be a bit of activity this afternoon, evening, with Ribbon and the youngsters. In the meantime, let's have a bumble. How about that? I just went to that area where Jonty saw that leopard this morning. And it, uh, nothing there. I must say, it's not nearly as hot as yesterday. Hi there, New Linda. Uh, yes, certainly. If I'm down in that region, it'll be a little bit later in the afternoon. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely go past there again. Um, you see, the check is now getting to the stage where it moves, literally walks around. So uh, it was probably just on top of the bank. So we'll definitely go past there, absolutely. Absolutely, we'll give you an update as soon as we're there. Like I mentioned, it will probably be a little bit later in the afternoon. It's all that way. We're just trying to cover as much ground initially while it's hot. See if we can find some elephants, but perhaps a treehouse dam or one of those areas. How lovely was that buffalo this morning. That was so fresh in my memory. Really stunning sighting. Well, um, while we are en route to Trias Dam area, let's go to John T, who's still with his war dogs. We're still on quarantine. We actually haven't moved at all, but we've got these kudu moving through the open here, which is, it, it looks so awesome with the light on them. There were some in Yala as well, but they've, they're still here, but they, the view's not so great. They're sort of hiding in the shade, but it was quite a nice shot to see the differences between them. That young male's had enough for the day, he's so tired he's just going to lie down and eat. <laughs> oh, in the shade there, there's quite a nice little breeze coming across us. And it's funny, that kudu's lying in the sun some of the females to his right are in the shade, the Nyala are all in the shade. We are in the shade, and it is delightful to have this breeze coming past us. <clears throat> but I must say, Chris's sighting of the buffalo did sound pretty cool. So that is what we are going to try and find this afternoon. Becky, I mean, if a lion or a leopard was to be able to creep up to any antelope that was lying down, it definitely would be at a disadvantage. But where these ones are currently lying, it's very open around them. And there's a lot of eyes and ears around here. There's warthogs, there's a steenbok, one steenbok, there's a herd of Inyala, there's a herd of Impala and the Kudu. So it would have to be a ninja predator to get
Sorry about that, you lost us there. There must be some gremlins in the bush <laughs> playing with our signal, but we're back. I was just saying um, our plan is to start at Juma Dam <clears throat> and see if we can just see which way those tracks of that herd of buffalo, which way they go, and then uh, see if we can catch up to them. That's the plan we're going to start with, whether or not we finish with that. There's a male impala in front of us that looks like he just realized he was actually standing with a herd of Vinyala. <laughs> and now he's decided to walk away. <laughs> now there the Vinyala. We'll just watch. We're just going to sit here for another minute or two and then we'll probably carry on with our plan. Do you dream of traveling to a far-flung wilderness location where life continues as normal? A place where you can escape to nature and breathe. If you become a wild earth explorer, then this could soon become a reality. Subscribe today and stand a chance to win regular travel prizes. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. What are you doing? Are you trying out for the ballet? <laughs> now it's an itchy bottom. Up we get. Mom's coming. Everybody's moving off. Hi, I'm Mike Anderson and I come to you live every day from Eco Training Pridelands Conservancy in South Africa. The wild animal I think is most underrated, I think buffaloes are the most underrated. They're so, t so tenacious and ferocious and also very, very protective of each other, which I find incredible. You know, sometimes people think of the big five, they just think of lions and leopards and other big animals. But I think buffaloes are pretty underrated. Catch up with the guides daily here on Wild Earth. The bushwalk feed allows the camera person some creative license. This is my favorite style of shooting. You have to be mentally and physically prepared. You're shooting handheld in some very strange and contorted positions, always with a straight back, often in the squat position, low to the ground. The creativity comes down to the relationship and sync you have with your presenter. The more you understand each other, the more you'll be able to tell the story seamlessly. So we have moved off from quarantine, we're approaching the dam wall here at Juma Dam. I'm going to go stop there <clears throat> and have a little look around and see what, what's interesting around the dam. you're 100% correct. Oh, I'm just going to stop us here. Now, it's always good luck if you hit any watering hole. You kind of just want to sit, switch off, listen for a bit, because obviously at first glance it might seem like there's nothing. But there's got to be something. 
Egyptian goose normally. Oh, nice. Look at that heron. It's like little and large with a plover in front of it. <clears throat> Yo, Lisa, all sorts, hey? Um, it just does get tougher in summer because of the rain. There's sort of little water holes that pop up all over the place, so the animals don't have to go to the big water points because they kind of get water wherever they want um, but I'm always hoping for elephant buffalo throughout the day you'll probably get antelope various antelope zebra coming down to drink the predators will come down and drink so literally anybody I'd love to see this heron go in and catch a fish. <laughs> this has a hornbill in the background. There was a hippo when I was here last time, and but it seems at the moment there isn't one. They must have moved off to another another water point. But sometimes you've got to look carefully because they'll just stick their nostrils out. And then you get a fright if you pick that dam as one to go swimming in. And you panic. <laughs> We're gonna stake out the dam a little bit longer. You're gonna head over to Chris, who's found something very interesting to show you. Like I mentioned, on route two, where we want to be, we pick out these little interesting bits. We'll bring them to you. All right, so firstly, this plant is called a poison apple. So at the moment, they've got the typical flower of this particular group of plants called solanum. Uh, and in fact, there are two foods that we use at home every day that are a very close relative of this wild version this poison apple and to give you a hint it's got a yellow like berry about one or two centimeters in diameter and if you look at this flower typically of this genus solanum it's got this sort of five stars and in that yellow in the middle some in this genus is a little bit white so this is a wild version but my question is and any one of the two well will work so it will be correct if you can do both uh, it's two points. <laughs> so there's two foods that we use in our homes every day that are in the same genus solanum, 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 depends on how you pronounce it, that we eat every day. Very close relative of this wild plant that grows out here. All right, so take a good look at it. So you got those five stars on, here's a little fly, a bee. So purple, yellow, anyway. So, to give you a hint, the one food is a tuber, or a root that we eat, and the other food is a berry. Right, so that. However, while you look at that, this is a lovely plant. I do not know the English name for this. I'm going to ask some other guys, but in Afrikaans we call it misbredi, which, if you translate it, almost like dung spinach. And 
This often grows here in piles of uh, rhino, rhino middens. Often uh, they grow in, in sort of rich dung, rich soil. Um, and I remember this as a child in our cattle corral. This used to come up a lot after the rains. And the local people where I come from, the Tsetswana people, also call this maroch. Now maroch is a general term for any wild spinach. And this is no different. In fact, this is some of the best wild spinach that you get out here. It's got very fine, fine, fine little leaves. And it can be eaten fresh as well. So I've given BK one as well and he was very pleasantly surprised. And it is very nutritious. So I'm going to pick a few small leaves. And uh, Hi, Jenny Page. Mm, this is lovely. Your answer is 100% correct. It is indeed tomatoes and potatoes, all of them in that genus Solanum. This, um, this wild spinach, or morojo, it's fresh, it tastes almost sort of between watercress. It's got a similar flavor to watercress and it reminds a little bit of uh, rocket. So this will, this is a lovely in, in, uh, plant for salads, but it makes a fantastic spinach. I'll keep this and ask some of the guys if they know the English name for this. But this is not the reason I stopped. Look at that. Gone now. <laughs> They're there somewhere. Mm, I must say the flavor of that wild spinach is... I can see it peeking through there. There we go! If I could take you on safari all day and all night, I would. But unfortunately, it's not always the best time to see the animals. Now, in between safaris, you can watch the Wild Earth channel with loads of extra shows. If you have a connected television, Apple TV or Roku box, then download the Wild Earth app, and if not, then just find it on the App Store on your phone. Wildlife trafficking remains a growing problem in South Africa, and often made worse by the way the media portray this complex issue. The Wildlife and Environment Society of South Africa, WESA, have recently embarked on a program whereby they train reporters to better tell stories of wildlife trafficking. In my community, wildlife conservation is mostly something other people do, and I would like to change that. My name is Iman Singli. I told people I met that the pangolin is one of the most trafficked animals on the planet. But what is a pangolin, they said. Why is it in danger? This is what made me decide that the pangolin story must be told. If we are to play a part in preventing the extinction of this animal, then we must all be part of the battle. A partnership between WWF South Africa and WESA, supported by USAID. There is clearly something in the vicinity around you that's drawn their attention. Yes, that meerkat in the tree is just the coolest of cool meerkats. But watch out how bad he battles when he comes down. <laughs> it would be like me climbing a tree, just better. My name is Lauren and I'm currently working in Juma Private Game Reserve here in South Africa. I love answering your questions during the live safaris. It's my favorite part. It feels like you're on the vehicle with me and I'm able to teach you exactly what you want to know. If you want to ask a question on Wild Earth, then you need to register on our website. Once registered, you must go to the live safari page and ask your question below the live feed. Good afternoon and welcome to Bushwalk. 
So for this afternoon, we decided that we're going to be anchored at one of the dams as it's incredibly hot and the humidity is incredibly high at the moment. And we also have noticed that the clouds are building up slowly again. So we're going to possibly have another thunder shower this afternoon. So my name is JP LaRue and behind the camera, we've got Morgan. So far this afternoon, we've had a number of elephants coming in and out at the dam and all of them coming to have a drink. The whole area around us at the moment is actually scattered with elephants and I'm sure they're going to return very soon. There was a number of different elephant herds that came in, both bachelors as well as breeding herds that were all having swims a little bit earlier. And then a few minutes ago, a lone bull that came in for a last drink and then disappeared. Our resident hippo is here for fourth or fifth day now. He wasn't enjoying it as much as it, the hippo elephants were, and they were actually pushing him around a little bit. And he's incredibly cautious of them, as he knows that they can potentially harm him. So for the moment, he's at least got a little bit of peace and quiet before the next herd of elephants are going to come in. There's also a number of giraffe in the distance, which we've noticed that is all slowly moving a little bit closer. Hopefully they too will be popping in for a drink. Good afternoon, Andrew, and welcome to the show. The first thing that they start doing is that they actually start moving off and they move away from those areas when those water bodies start drying up. We also will notice that there's a lot of competition within the remaining water bodies and quite often fierce fights as a number of different bulls want to try and make their way into the territory of another male. If they don't come right, then they have to move. And also in severe droughts, I've actually noticed a large amount of hippos actually dying from starvation as well as a lack of water. In a degree, they are very dependent on water as they needed to hydrate themselves, but also to protect themselves against the sun, but also to support those incredibly large bodies as it costs them a lot of energy to be on their feet. We also find that they can excrete actually a red viscous fluid that is there to also protect them against the sun, but that only works up to a certain degree. Well, we sit and watch our hippo and waiting for some more elephants to come in. Let's go see how Chris is getting on on his bumble. JP. Hopefully those elephant drops a lot more dung so my spinach can grow. <laughs> yeah, I must say that flavor is still lingering in my mouth. It's sort of like a rockety flavor. So much things out here. If you start to learn about it that you can eat and I reckon I should be able to survive if I'm stuck out here. Water is the main thing. Food is not a problem. Water. Finding water is really a mission. Right, we're on Shabamba Road and this is where uh, Mike from Juma this morning said he's seen male lion tracks. Um, I've not seen anything yet. And this is relatively close to Trios Dam. So if there was a line around, maybe, maybe, just maybe, it's gone down to the Trias Dam. But we'll first check this road and then we'll sort of quarter back. Hi there, Joy1980. We're all hoping for Tlalamba. She's been missing. <laughs> she's uh, she's been challenging to find the last couple of days. I want to see those cubs. That's what I want to do. Well, her as well, but. Well, let's see, maybe, I mean, we've got a long drive ahead. So, maybe, just maybe, just maybe, never know. I'm sure Jonty's brought us some good luck. He found a leopard this morning. So, so my leopard luck has uh, ran out a little bit. <laughs> 
and let's hope it changes. Still no sign of these line track reports, but I do think it's probably closer to the fire break. Good afternoon, Alan. Um, wants to know how long it took to, for me to learn the differences between most animal tracks. Well, it's a bit of a long answer, but I'm going to try and make it short. Uh, a number of the tracks I've known since childhood. Remember, I grew up in a relatively wild area as a cattle rancher, uh, and it's bush like this, and there was a lot of antelope that occurred on the ranch. Kudu, impala, bushbuck, waterbuck, all sorts of things. Uh, so most of the antelope and you know lion and leopard track those things my dad told me since you know hyena you know the bigger sort of things um, those things I've known since childhood um, the more sort of the smaller species all the mongoose and uh, you know some of the birds that took me nearly my entire career to get most of them done and there are still some tracks that I confuse I mean it's uh, it's, 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 there's still some species whose tracks I've not seen yet, which I only have like diagrams of, so maybe I'll recognize them if I do see them. Bika has pointed out something here now. They were there. Right, it seems like this is where they had line tracks. I might need to hop out and assess them. And they've gone onto the fire break. The soil is very hard, yeah. So I remember Mark said he did lose the tracks on the hard substrate, so a lot of impala around here so there's definitely not a lion close by all right while well, i'm gonna take a look at these tracks let's head over to jonty who's on a bumble Chris found those tracks again. I hope he has a bit of luck finding a line at the end of the tracks. It is interesting uh, what Chris was talking about, how long it takes to sort of become proficient at tracking. And obviously identifying the tracks is like skill one. <laughs> Spotting that there is actually a track there. Then the It. <clears throat> and it can be really hard and confusing, especially in the beginning. A lot of the antelope, but there's. Uh, I don't know when guys are sort of starting out. Do you know the big stuff first? If you can identify an elephant, then you're well on your way. <laughs> um, but then sort of, you know, being able to tell the difference between a lion track and a hyena track and then leopard and lion tracks look very similar but size-wise Welcome. 
welcome back to Bushwalk. We just seem to have lost Juma and we apologize for the technical issue that we have there. I'm sure that we will have him back very soon again. At the moment, we still at Ndlovo Dam for those who have just joined us. And our plan for the afternoon is to stick at the dam as it's incredibly hot and very uncomfortable for walking. So far, throughout the afternoon, since we got back from our morning activity, this dam has been pumping with elephant activity. We had several herds coming in and out to come and have a drink, as well as to come and have a swim. I hope that there's going to be a few more of them coming in in the next few minutes again. Our resident Hippo, he's still here as well. He's now left in peace and quiet, as the elephants were quite often hindering him a little bit earlier. He tend to move away from them as soon as they come close to him. He's very, very cautious of him, as they can harm him and potentially kill him. It's also one of the very few water holes where this hippo can actually put himself in them, place himself at the moment, as the other dam is actually too shallow. He would expose himself actually to being sunburned. I find it actually quite amazing that they can actually disappear in water that's almost knee deep and then get submerged themselves into that depth of water. And quite often, that's where a lot of people make the mistake of coming closer to the edge of the water, think that the, the hippo is quite in deep water, and then suddenly the hippo stands up, and they can start running very quickly as long as there's a firm surface underneath their feet. And they can potentially attack you if you are on the side of the edge of the water. However, most incidences with hippos actually occur with people that are on footpaths. Um, hippos and get between the hippo and the water when the hippo actually wants to return from the foraging trip. We also quite often find that a lot of people make a mistake of bumping into hippos on overcast days, especially in winter, when it's not too hot for these animals, but also that there's a sufficient amount of cloud cover that gives them some form of relief against the sun. They can also become quite stressed in the winter months and they actually get forced to go and feed, especially in the dry cycles. Um, they have no little choice other than eating in the day, sometimes to actually support their incredibly large bodies. For those of you that wondered what a hippo can weigh, they can potentially get up to just over 3,000 kilograms. However, I reckon that the most average of the average sizes for hippos around here is probably 1,800 kilograms or so. I often get asked what is the heaviest of the two, if it's actually hippo or actually white rhino. It's actually the hippo that outweighs the white rhino. As a majority of records of white rhino bulls are in the vicinity of some 2,200 kilograms. And as far as I know, the records for black rhinos are in the vicinity of 1,500 to 600 kilograms maximum weight. When on safari, there is nothing better than an evening spent under the stars chatting around a fire with the sounds of the wild all around you. If you sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer, you can build your own memories by joining our guides for regular fireside chats. Subscription payments can be made by PayPal, credit card and now bank transfer. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. There we go, look. All three in one frame. <laughs> look at that, isn't that cool? Oh, that is so special. That is exactly what we had been hoping for, is all three of them to come together and make the perfect little family portrait. My favorite animal is a leopard, purely because I just think they are just the epitome of feline grace and power and the way they can move about in any environment and remain hidden until they want to be seen. I just find 
and incredibly intoxicating and they're amazingly beautiful. Catch up with the guides daily here on Wild Earth. I love being a cam up for Wild Earth. The animals coming right up close to you, especially like lions. Sometimes you get nervous, but you have to go with the flow. <laughs> My favorite animal to film is the elephant because of how big it is. But when it's really up close to you, it's one animal that you would say, I really respect you. Okay, so I found those line tracks. It was from early this morning, and I could see where Mike lost it going into the block, so it's not really an option for us to track there. Um, best option would be to perhaps as soon as it's dark to just listen out um, if it vocalizes. Not sure what male it would be. It's only a track at the moment. Hi Brian. You know what? Finding some lines will be incredible, not even nice. We've been low on lions lately. Seem to avoid Juma for some bizarre reason. I've seen the Telematis once. Hello there, get off my yarn. Wants to know what other cats other than lion and leopards are found here. All right, so cheetah, one, even though we don't always see them, very rare, but they do occur in the Sabi sands. Uh, caracal, caracal also occurs here. Uh, serval, beautiful spotted cat, about that big. Um, African wildcats, and that's them, that's the cats. You know, the genets are sometimes referred to by some people as genet cats and civets are like civet cats, but they're not cats. They're in the mongoose family or related to mongoose. So the cats here, lion, leopard, serval, African wildcat, caracal, five species of cat. And then elsewhere in South Africa, you also have the small spotted or black-footed cat, as it's also known as. And then further up in Africa, there's a few others, the golden cat, the sand cat, the Sahara. Um, think what is there as well. Uh, Yeah, I think that's about it. There might be one or two more. Right, let's see what Trias Dam brings up. At this stage, only the resident pair of geese. Hi there, Nina. Um, Egyptian geese are being predated on by crocodiles. Uh, on land, I've had cases of leopard that I've seen take one. I have seen uh, footage of caracal taking them. I've heard about baboons even taking the goslings. The baboons are not really a predator, but they occasionally will kill stuff. Uh, eagles, a number of the large eagles will also prey on them. I've heard reports of pythons. Um, the eggs are being predated on by various things from snakes, uh, egg-eating snakes, egg-eaters, baboons, monkeys, um, mongoose, 
uh, quite a variety. Monitor lizards also eat the young. Um, luckily in the water, not much can get to them. Water is their safe zone, other than crocodiles. can hear a couple of um, emerald-spotted wood doves there in the distance, sort of that ooh. Such a sad sound, actually. Hi there, Ree. Uh, yes, with a duck, geese. I think they do take turns. They do for the others to go and feed. But it's generally mainly the female, but the males do sometimes relieve them. Well, I was hoping to find a hippo in the water, but it sounds like JP might have found one chilling in the water. Let's head over to JP. Welcome back on Bushwalk. We're still watching our hippo, and when Chris made me just think about the Egyptian geese, as we have got one on the dam as well. And both Egyptian geese as well as the hippopotamus is two of the animal species that quite often played a significant cultural role within ancient Egypt. And we find that the hippopotamus itself used to be actually a fertility dainty. And once a year with the flooding of the Nile, a young lady would be sacrificed and be thrown into the Nile to appease the fertility dainty. We also find that the crocodile most likely benefited from that, and even the crocodile, which is known as a Nile crocodile, was also um, an animal that played quite a, a big role in Egyptian culture. It used to go by the name of Sobek. The Egyptian geese itself, they were quite often embalmed and placed inside the tombs of pharaohs so that they could hunt them in the afterlife. Another animal that we find that was often also associated with ancient Egypt, and that's the jackal. And with jackals, they believe that they will actually call to the souls of dead people so that they can take them towards the underworld or where they should go and rest. It's an interesting discussion I recently had with somebody after I made the comment that uh, Egyptian geese don't occur any longer in Egypt, as we were always taught that they're extinct in that area, and said that they recently tried to reintroduce them. I'm not quite 100% sure how successful the project is, and if anybody can maybe give me a little bit more information on that. And was this a question that I just missed out there on baby hippos? If we can just maybe ask to repeat that question and the viewer's name. Good afternoon, Anne, and welcome to the show. And with regards to your question about if there's any baby hippos in the area, unfortunately, we're not so fortunate to have any baby hippos. The only hippo that I've seen on Prydens since I've been here is this single bull that has moved between a number of the dams on the different properties and adjoining properties. And it's almost been six months since he's disappeared, and roughly four or five days ago, he made a reappearance for the first time when we found his tracks on the property. And that very same evening, we actually located him here at Ndlovo Dam. 
it will really be cool if we can have some more hippos. I love hippos and especially baby hippos. It's quite cute for me, especially when they sometimes rest on top of the mother. One of the other things I find quite interesting about baby hippos is that they can actually suckle when they're underneath water. One of the things that they do, they simply just wrap their tongue around the teat of a female and then create a watertight seal with the mouth and then consume the milk without actually ingesting water or swallowing water in any way. It's just amazing how these animals are so well adapted to living in water. Literally everything from hiding in water, mating in water, as well as even giving birth in water. Seems if he's absolutely fast up there for the first moment he opens his eyes again. Mm. Good afternoon, Laura, and welcome to the show. And with regards to your question, why can they drink any water? They can drink out of most water bodies, but not all water bodies. And some species of animals actually have a preference for very clean water as well such as African elephant, they will not drink water that is dirty. And if there's a choice between two different water bodies where the water is murky and water clear, they'll go to that water body where the water is much clearer. They can also dig for water. And what happens quite often if you create a little hole in the sand, the water starts percolating in there. And that water is generally also cooler and it actually filters through the sand and is not contaminated with other particles and sediment in that case. As a naturalist, it's really important that I stay up to date and up to breast with what's happening in the wild and in the world around us. The Wild Earth app helps us do that and helps us stay abreast with the live interactions of animals every day. We're going to be here at Stony Point bringing you the African penguin story and we'd love to see you on the app. See you on the beach. Cape Nature is the chief custodian of the Western Cape of South Africa's natural environment. This highly successful organization strives to conserve the province's natural heritage to ensure a sustainable future. Besides nurturing nature, Cape Nature offers an authentic ecotourism experience to local and international visitors. And one of these experiences is walking amongst the penguins at Stony Point, or as we know it, Penguin Beach. Wild Earth broadcasts live from here every day and is very privileged to be partnered with Cape Nature who have focused their conservation efforts here. If you want to visit these iconic black and white African penguins for yourself, then head over to our website to find out more. Cape Nature. Conserve. Explore experience. Hello boy. You are a monster. And he's coming right up to us. Hello boy. Oh, settle down. Settle down. He is very, very close. He's pushing his trunk against the car. You can feel the car moving. Hey, 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 hey. Stop that. Expect the unexpected here on Wild Earth daily. I am an outdoor photographer, a wildlife filmmaker, and a conservation storyteller. Penguin Beach is going to offer us this really unique opportunity to watch and pick up on the smallest of details in the penguins' lives. It's going to allow us the time to really get to know these penguins well, get to know their story, and get to interpret the little finer details and share that with you. 
the live TV show and get you to fall in love with penguins. Alrighty, so we are playing in close to Twindam. So we're going to go check if there's anything there and then at the same time we'll just quickly head to the Ahina Den. Uh, probably a bit early, but we're going to check. Fresh cut. Welcome back on Bushwalk. We've once again just lost Juma. That seems to be a little bit of a problem of a signal again this afternoon. That quite often happens when we are in wilderness areas where signal is not always as stable as in urban environments. But let's see what we can deliver at the dam. Once again, as we are anchored in the shade at the moment, as it's incredibly hot and we don't really want to start walking until it's much cooler, we would love to hear some questions from you as well to help us out. So if there's anybody that has any questions about either the ecology or a specific animal or bird species that you would like to ask, you're more than welcome to do so. It seems as if we've got Juma back again. Let's go and see what Chris is up to. All right, so lost us there for a second, but we're back. Um, just going to quickly check the den site. You know, it might be a bit early. Well, let's take a look. Oh, Wendy's full of bumps and stuff today. No. Oh, no, there's nothing happening here at the moment. There's a lot of tracks at the entrance. Uh, I don't think she's moved them. Let's go check the other den site up ahead. This was another one just around the drainage here. Yeah? So we'll, we'll check that one as well, but there's enough track movement there to suggest it's still there. Like I mentioned, she's probably just out in the bush still hunting and then when she's not here, these cubs will very likely stay inside the den for safety. Uh, only much later will they start moving around without her being here. Uh, some don't even change it. They all have a den and they'll stick to that one. Uh, it's, they often change when they are bothered by something. Let's say there's lions that came through the area or you know something bothers them. Maybe the weather, it rains in or something, there's a flood. So those factors usually causes them some spider webbing to change the den site. But if nothing, if it's a good den site and it works, uh, then they won't change. Another reason why they will sometimes move to an alternative den site is that you start to have a build-up of parasites, ticks and fleas and so forth. It starts building up inside the nests and then uh, and mites and all sorts yeah, of... 
uh, they then um, then move. So those factors will cause them to move. There's no frequency that we can attach to that. It will differ from clan to clan. It will actually, even within the same clan, differ season to season. Very dynamic in that sense, really. Okay, let's check the dam out, and after the dam, we'll head into the drainage. See if there's anything on the owls, and then from there, we'll maybe formulate a new plan. Maybe get a couple of updates. We'll see. We'll never run out of plans. Suzanne, um, they could survive, the other clan members could potentially look after that, after them, but they'll have a very, very low status, which is already the case, but it's possible that they will look after them. Let's just stop here for a moment. And this is where we last saw Mareeps. Very peaceful always at these dams. There's always a lot happening here. Right, I think we should probably get into the drainage and see what uh, what the owls are up to. Lionesses. We had Darkman, of course, doing his best to protect them and to catch a buffalo for them for dinner. But unfortunately, as soon as the buffalo came around, he hot-tailed in the opposite direction. <laughs> now we're having a fabulous time and it's really been magnificent so far. Thank you.
guys, just watch what's happening. See, watch the elephant, watch the lions. See, the first ones to run are the cubs. I'm not sure how scared you were, but I was quite nervous. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Expect the unexpected here on Wild Earth Daily. The bushwalk feed allows the camera person some creative license. This is my favorite style of shooting. You have to be mentally and physically prepared. You're shooting handheld in some very strange and contorted positions, always with a straight back, often in the squat position, low to the ground. The creativity comes down to the relationship and sync you have with your presenter. The more you understand each other, the more you'll be able to tell the story seamlessly. Hello, everybody. We are at Chitwood Dam. <clears throat> I'm actually looking for the crocodile that normally hangs out on this island. But there's a lot of hippos. Oh, that one just popped up there. <laughs> Darby was telling me about the sighting he had, was it a few weeks ago? Months ago? About four or five weeks ago. Four weeks ago, five weeks ago with the hippo, the male hippo and the hippo calf. That sounds unbelievable. I'm quite glad I didn't see that. This is such a beautiful dam, it's always worth coming to check out what's happening here. Oh, no ways. I don't know if you'll get it, it's far, but on the dam wall, like midway, yeah. where those jippos are hanging out, look at, look at the little one. Yeah. <laughs> look how cute those things are. How many are they saying? It is bad because they are like little mini cheddars for crocodiles. And so you'll see, I'm trying to count how many are there, one, two, three, four, are there six, seven. Um, yeah, you'll see, I think there's seven there. And it's always one, two, three, four, five, no, six. There's six. Oh, Riley, that's a good question. I actually don't know the answer straight off the bat. Um, I think I've seen about ten uh, with a with goose before. Um, but yeah, I was just saying, like each time you come and check, um, <laughs> you might see that one is one number is down each time you come and check. Um, let me just have a quick look in my Robert's book. If it says how many, that is a good question. Um, next. Eggs, so it says they could lay between 1 and 22, but it would be unlikely that all of them would would hatch. Um, it doesn't... So it says here the sort of normal average what well, says 5.9 <laughs> you don't want to be the 0.9 chick <laughs> so to see what we're seeing there 
<clears throat> is a pretty normal clutch size that would survive around six. And then of that, there would be quite a high mortality rate. Birds of prey, snakes, crocodiles, monitor lizards would take them down. But they are so cute. What is the average lifespan of a goose? That is a good, good question. Again, I'm going straight to my Roberts <coughs> app because I've got to be honest, it's so bad, but I don't, I don't know. I do like these questions where I don't know the answers. I might have to have a proper look um, and actually get back to you. This is, this is here 15 years. That is a long time. 15 years for, a, for an Egyptian goose. That's cool, you can hear in the background there's a Deirdrick's cuckoo calling. Dee, 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 Deirdrick's. That would be a great one to find, a beautiful bird. <clears throat> yeah, they are adorable, Diane. They just look so fluffy. So I'm making the car shake. <laughs> that one stretching his little wings at the back there. That is a cool sound, some fish eagles. So while we were waiting, I did hear, it is funny, this part of the property that we're in the radio, so hard to hear, it's so much crackle, but it sounded like they found a male lion somewhere. It is beautiful. I am going to just not speak for a while. Just enjoy the sounds of the hippos, the birds.
And we're going to continue enjoying this beautiful scene. You're going to head over to JP. Welcome back on Bushwalk. We're still at Lovo Dam and waiting for more elephants to come in. At the moment we still have our hippo and quite a few different species of birds that are flying in and out to come and have a little drink every now and then. I don't know if there's any of the viewers that has any questions for us so far in the meanwhile that we can maybe answer while we are waiting for some animals to make their way down to the water. Good afternoon, Ron, and welcome to the show. And with regards to your question, how long can a hippo remain underneath water? For an adult, they can stay there between five and six minutes. And then for a young calf, they can stay there approximately between 20 and 42 seconds maximum before they have to come up to come and breathe. Good afternoon, Kimo, and welcome to the show. And with regards to your question, if their sweat is pink, it's actually not their sweat really, but it's a secretion that they will excrete that is there to protect themselves against sunburn. If it was possible for them to sweat, just like in the case of elephants as well as that um, rhinos also can't sweat, they would be able to actually control their bodies more effectively. It's just amazing to watch how this hippo is now absolutely fast asleep and it's only his nostrils that are sticking out above the water's edge. And then his one eye that's looking at the one side of the dam. It's amazing that he, although the eyes are quite often closed, how quickly they do pick up movement if you do try and come closer. I incredibly well adapted at spotting almost anything that's moving. You probably have to as that you also do have uh, exposed to a number of predators if you are in a shallow pool. For them, most of the predators is when they are threats are actually when they are on land and quite often they do get taken by lions. I've actually seen quite a few lion hunts um, where they've actually taken down hippopotamus in the past. In the water, the only real ones that are at threat is a baby calf that might be exposed to crocodiles. And with crocodiles as well, there's several records of them actually chomping crocs in half as they've got incredibly strong as well as sharp teeth to deal with a crocodile. They also use those incredibly long sharp teeth on one another when it comes to fighting for territory, when it comes to two bulls that want to displace one another. The females are not territorial, they just simply form part of a male's territory. I also find it particularly interesting that the females will simply wait for the male to leave in the afternoon and once he starts moving out, the rest of the group will start also leaving the water body, all going in different directions to go and feed for the evening. Hopefully this guy will get some friends and mates to come and join him very soon. Well, in the meanwhile, let's go and see what Chris is up to. All right, after quite a bit of a search, we finally found Twiglet. Mum is right above him in the tree, but you won't see her from here. She's covered by branches. Um, now, he's moved about 30 meters northwards on the bank. 
And we're probably going to see more of this in the next week or so. Weeks until he fledges. She or she, we don't know. We had such a beautiful spot where it was, and now it's hidden in the grass. But we know it's alive. That's the first prize that we got today. I was a bit worried this morning when I was here and didn't see it. Actually, BK spotted it as we were about to leave. His eagle eyes spotted the owl. BK, I reckon you should come and drive, and I must be on the camera. I'm good, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, BK says he's good behind the camera. I think we all prefer him there. Seems like everybody is very happy to see Twiglet. Yes, and myself included. Good afternoon, welcome back, Waikisha. Yes, it's growing so quickly. Uh, we've got a very limited time left before it fledges. Well, it seems like Jonty might have found spots. Let's head over to Jonty. Guys, this is so cool. So we were driving around to get a closer look at the Egyptian geese and we saw that water buck snorting like that and we were saying, water buck don't lie. And look what they're snorting at. Uh, Dion, I'm just on my brother's side, but I'm uh, heading towards you now, man. 
are legendary. <clears throat> it's so cool when when things like that happen. Darby and I was literally as we came onto the wall, we were saying we need to look down here because water buck are pretty trustworthy. And they've led us to a leopard. Having only seen him once before, I think this is Shasha, but I'm sure. Well, I don't know. We'll get. Uh, I'm sure we'll get told shortly by some of the viewers who watch. hear that water buck snorting in the background. This is amazing, the water buck, it's obviously they feel threatened enough that they've got to snort and tell the leopard that they can see it. <clears throat> and that would obviously alert any other antelope that's around here. Oh yes, please. Oh, he's actually... There's a bit of like muddy water there. Quality beef. <laughs> cool, eh? That is. Uh huh. Cool. We've just been told it's Mareeps. He's just laid down in the worst place possible. Let me just try reposition him. <clears throat> I'm also going to have to call this in on the radio fairly soon, which could spark this area into chaos. I'm just going to try reposition. I've always dreamed of Africa since I was a little girl. And then I just decided, you know what? It's time to come. It's time to just live the dream. If you want to go on safari with a wild earth guide, whilst honing your bush knowledge, and of course featuring in one of our shows, then head over to our website. It is so exciting. You're able to see the difference of what you see on TV to how much work it actually is creating what you see on TV. The leopards, Mareeps, how could you not really fall in love with that cat? He's got such a personality, and you never know what he's gonna do. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer, and you could be making your first ever on-screen appearance. It's about just being together and seeing and enjoying the animals and the great outdoors. It's just been a great experience. Certainly, if anyone's able to, dare to dream and come. Wildlife trafficking remains a growing problem in South Africa and often made worse by the way the media portray this complex issue. The Wildlife and Environment Society of South Africa, WESA, have recently embarked on a program whereby they train reporters to better tell stories of wildlife trafficking. In my community, wildlife conservation is mostly something other people do and I would like to change that. My name is Iman Singli. I told people I met that the pangolin is one of the most trafficked animals on the planet. But what is a pangolin, they said. Why is it in danger? This is what made me decide that the pangolin story must be told. If we are to play a part in preventing the extinction of this animal, then we must all be part of the battle. A partnership between WWF South Africa and WESA, supported by USAID. Guys, have a look at what we've got. This is better than my birthday. Look at that. This is the first time that I ever see cubs this small. Th this is so special. This has officially just become my best sighting of all times. 
Tune into Wild Earth every single day. It's in your nature. What is this right again? Uh, but, huh? Yeah, it seems like uh, Wendy is a buffalo magnet. <laughs> and as you give an idea, we were with the wigs and uh, we just continued along the Milwaukee in the drainage and as we came out, here's the buffalo. <laughs> I want to call it in. I want to call it in. I like to call things in. Stations um, Slaminyari on Batalia, uh, just right along the edge of the Mulwati, Mobile South. Always sounds so nice to call stuff in there. <laughs> Everybody agrees that Wendy is a buffalo magnet, yeah. I wasn't even looking for them. I know Jonty was looking around for them. But he then obviously decided to go to Chitwa Dam. And seems like that paid off for him. Some of them's gonna go drink in that walla. Should we try and reposition? What do you all think? Wanna see some buffalo drinking water? If we can't get around this puddle. No, it's not gonna work. We're gonna be. Let's go this way. Let's go this way. A couple of young ones drinking there. Hello. Sorry about that. A little bit annoyed there with us. Sorry. Don't mean to interrupt your afternoon quencher. Young bull giving us attitude, yeah. <laughs> Still watching us in the back, yeah. Hey, buddy. We're not a lion, eh? It's Wendy. It's a 4x4 four four vehicle. Not much drinkable water there, that's just mud, but it uh, looks like they... Mm. Can't think that could be tasty. Lots of uh, algae and cyanobacteria in there. And mud. Guys, Twin Dams is not that far. You can head there. There's cleaner water there. It's the matter that they resilience to the elements, you know. And I mean, if we drink that water as it is, we would certainly, certainly be 
be be having a lot of stomach problems. You'd probably get fairly sick. Well, let's head over to John T and see what his sleeping cat is doing. Chris, the cat is up to a whole lot of nothing. So I've just, you might hear the radio in the background. Um, <clears throat> I have called it in, so I'm just keeping the radio on because someone is coming to join us. But look how camouflaged it is. Every now and again, we still hear a water buck snort <laughs> there. Um, your dog and I were just talking, saying, we must drive past so many leopards. Yeah, Michael. Because yeah, where he's moved to now, there's no way you'd spot him from the top. The only giveaway would be the water buck. When he did move, I was, had a look at his stomach. He he doesn't look thin. I would say he's probably eaten recently. Um, and he's in such a great spot. There's a lot of cover. There's a lot of little water puddles in this eroded gully that he's lying in. And obviously there's a whole dam just behind us. So. <laughs> I'm just listening <laughs> to the radio. <laughs> it is so funny. I love that. Did you tell her Ingwe? No, I told her the honey badger first. That's too funny. It's so funny, some of the different places, the different radio procedures, and what you can and can't get away with are amazing. We're going to stay here and see if Marips moves. You're going to head to a buffalo wallow. Uh, John T, I think I win this round because my buffalo is not sleeping. They are all in a mud wallow, drinking water. Muddy, muddy and stinky water. Hi there, Arnold. Um, generally, they will. The only way they'll sense predators if they can physically see, hear, or smell them. So, if visibility here, if they can see a, lip, a lion, or hear it approaching, or smell it, then they will react to it. In a way, they find lions the same way we do. And lions find them the same way we do. Lions actually, I've seen lions trailing them on their tracks. Probably more scent because I mean they leave quite a lot of scent as they move with all that dung and urine as they move.
and water is turning into a proper mud bath now. <laughs> Hi James, yes, this is wonderful, eh? I wonder if my wife is watching today. If you're watching, that is a nice mud bath, but she's always into all these beauty products. By the way, she doesn't need any beauty products. She's very pretty. <laughs> There's a mud bath for you, babe. Just wait for the buffalo to move off. <laughs> Get away from my mud. That's what I love about buffalo. They're always doing something. They you can, you can, you can, you can literally, in fact, I, myself and Darren had this discussion a while back. And he says it's one of his favorite things to film out here live. Uh, BK, I'm not sure if you can concur. No, BK says elephants. <laughs> anyway, Darren uh, said that, um, you know, for that very same reason, there's always something that you can, you can, you can, from a cameraman perspective, it's such a nice species because within a herd like this, you can, Ban out, and you can move into every little individual, and you can spend hours there and have these powerful visuals all the time. And for me, as a guide with guests, it's the same principle. You can look in any direction, and there's a buffalo grazing, there's one drinking, there's one doing this, there's two rubbing horns. It just always seems to be something going on with them. It's amazing. Wow. Hey. And five, four, three, two, one. Live, live. Oh, that's cool. Just in there. And the black mob is going up the tree and the mongoose is attacking it. Once again. I'm sure you can all agree with me. It's not a bad start to our Wednesday morning. Something that I have never seen before in my entire life that you are now watching live. Look at that. It's just beautiful. Fantastic display by a little herd of springbuck. How is this view? My heart is in my mouth, everybody. Amazing, they've locked their tusks together. You can hear the cracking crunches. It is so incredible to spend this time so close to an African penguin and it's completely unfazed by my presence whatsoever. How insane is that animal? Amazing. Fantastic to watch. Well, now we've got a tug of war between mom and daughter. Look. I'm just at a loss for words. Yeah. I mean, that's just incredible to see that.
Something spooked them now. I'm not sure if it was just a, a sound that they didn't understand or maybe there's lions, you never know. But they seem calm now, so I don't think it's lions. It looks like most of them have moved on. They're heading into relatively thick stuff, so I'm not sure. If we will be able to stay with them. And they are, well, they are rather widespread, so we might see a few more of the remainder of the herd. This is the definitely not all of them. I brought. Yes, it's like I mentioned this morning, it's that sort of like I owe you money, you owe me money, and I'm coming to collect. Hi there, Todd. Um, if you're on foot with a herd like this and you've got open area, I've been as close as 40, 40, 50 yards from them and they were fine. They were sort of very inquisitive and quite a few of them came even closer. Um, in dense bush, I would say don't even go there. Um, I found that these herds are generally fine with you on foot. They tend to move to you a little bit, look at you, snort, 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 and then they bash off running away. Uh, the older bulls, those dugger boys, when they're alone or in small dugger boy groups, um, I would say stay as far as away from them if you can. Um, although I've had cases where I was doing walks and we came relatively close, but then there would have been a barrier in between us, like a small river or um, something physical, or where you might have been on some high ground. Um, so again, it all depends on the terrain. The terrain is your deciding factor as to how close you can get on foot and still be 100% safe. Now, on that note, when we do trails uh, with guests on foot, the aim is not to look for trouble. Uh, the aim is to have a nature experience and hopefully get to see some animals on foot. And obviously they react a lot different than they do on vehicle. Uh, with the dangerous animals or potentially dangerous animals, for instance, buffalo, lion, leopard and those things, you know, we, if we spot them, we will only approach if every single variable is in our favor. The wind, the sun, the terrain, the type of animal, the composition of the grip, all those things needs to be in our favor before we will attempt an approach. And then usually, <laughs> sorry, just laughing at that one with a decoration on his head. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> nice little moment there. But yes, so we'll only approach and then we'll try and sneak in unseen. Uh, it's always best to remain unseen. And only stay as long as needed. You don't want to overstay and get detected and so forth. So the aim is not to disturb the animals. That's the first prize. If you can in it, get a photo, experience it, move out without them being disturbed, 
you've done everything textbook. And suddenly, it is dead, quiet, and peaceful. How amazing was that? Just suddenly, I'm gone. Well, well, we're going to see if we can relocate them. They've gone into some thick bush, but in the meantime, let's go over to Jonti, who's still around Chitwa. Yo, thanks, Chris. We are just looping around. Marip's got up and started moving. So we're just looping around. We've got the water buck in front of us, so you could get that, that sweet, sweet smell. Um, another vehicle has joined us. I don't know if they can still see him. I just want to try and see. If they can give us any clue. Or they're going to do the silent drive off. So they just said he's kind of moved in this drainage line. It was interesting, he was lying down flat and his ears pricked up and then he just started moving. So we're just going to have to try and go along this drainage line and keep seeing him, uh, see if we can see him. It was interesting, uh, Chris talking about the proximity to a buffalo. Uh, sort of without trying you'll definitely get sometimes much closer to a leopard Than you would to a buffalo, but without knowing that it's there This is a steep Sided drainage line and what's making me think I wonder if he hasn't stashed a kill in here mm, I'm just gonna try go around a little bit maybe a hyena or something was disturbing so I'm just going to chat on the radio quickly to let the other guy know that we don't have visual uh, Dion, no, I don't have visual yet. I'm just going to go a little bit further west down this drainage system. Let's see if I can relocate. Uh, I definitely didn't. Uh, sorry, Dion, confirm you got his visual again. Okay, copy. So he says his head's just popped up. I don't know if we're going to get a view from here. Whoa. No, we're around the bend here. Yeah. And that, unfortunately, is beyond rat capability. So while we try and, just going to try and reposition, see if we can get another view of him. Hello everyone, my name is JP. I'm one of your Wild Earth Eco Training Bushwalk Guides. So for many years you've been watching Wild Earth directly from your laptop or computer. However now you can watch it directly from your connected TV your Apple TV or from your Roco box. 
And if you are like me, always busy, you can now download the Wild Earth app and view it directly from your mobile phone. Certainly hasn't had enough milk at this age. No amount of milk is enough. Oh, Corky. <laughs> Too sweet. Oh, look at this. <laughs> that is stunning. Tune into Wild Earth every single day. It's in your nature. I've been a guide for just over 20 years. Started my career in the low field of South Africa and it's become full circle and I'm back here today and I'm extremely grateful for that. My favorite animal is hands down elephants. I'm a family man and the way the family is structured in elephants, it resonates with me and therefore I've chosen elephants. My favorite activity out in the bush is to track big game. It gives you the opportunity to learn about their behavior in much more depth than just observing them. My favorite sighting at Wild Earth was where the Talamati Bride was trying to hunt buffalo in this beautiful, misty, foggy morning. The whole setting was just so surreal and it intensified, culminating in a near successful hunt. One of the main reasons I became a guide in the first place is to share this wonder with people. And now I get to do it with a much wider audience. You can still hear a number of buffalo around, so let's just quickly go through the drainage. This is an enormous herd. This is that same group, I think, that we saw this morning. It's very likely. So let's, uh, let's go and check. I can hear some of them. They're probably the tail end of the herd. And then we can, after that, try and find our own leopard. How about that? Yeah. I did see some move here. There we go. There's a couple. These ones in the back are very nervous. They've been very vocal, very nervous. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna backtrack their tracks. And smell them. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to backtrack and see if there's no any lions trailing them. But let's go to Jonty. Seems like he's found Marips again. So. We, D on the other vehicle, managed to find Marips again. He's lying. He's actually in such a cool spot for him. Oh, there. He's got up. There's actually quite a lot of water where he is there. Let me try and go forward a little bit. <clears throat> He actually looks like he was almost limping a little bit. I can just see the tip of his tail now.
Yeah, when he when he did that last little jump and walk, it actually looked like he was limping a little bit on his paw. Okay, he's carrying on. So let's try and <laughs> reposition again. But we are the bottom is <laughs> right here. It's a little bit puckered up here. No, he he's still a bit young for that. He'll still be moving around within his mom's territory. Uh, he's definitely got to got a few more years before he would start taking claim and sort of owning his own space. And unfortunately for us, it it wouldn't be here. He would get pushed out, and so we wouldn't be able to view him anymore because he'd more than likely go to a different property. Let's just see, I don't know. I think he's walking down this gully. Should I go around again or wait here? Okay, we're gonna preempt his movement. This is where we literally just turned around from <laughs> five minutes ago. But let's see, maybe we'll... <clears throat> Maybe we'll get lucky and have him walk towards us. There's actually a beautiful log that's across the drainage line. And I think if we get flippin' lucky, he'll, he's gonna go onto it. And I'm not gonna say anything. I, last time I laid a bet on a leopard doing something, the leopard did it. And I ended up having to consume a lot of alcohol with guests. <laughs> Which is not bad, it was a good night. See, there's the, let me go a little bit further around here, Davi. Must I just, oh, there he is there. Oh, he actually went under that log. So he's gonna pop out. He's walking towards us. We might just get lucky and get another view. Yeah, there he comes. Oh. I'll go forward a bit. I'm just making space for the other car to join us. Actually, that's the branch that he tripped over. So he's deciding to eat it. That's one way to deal with a branch that gives you a thorn. Yeah, Matthew, that's right. He's definitely got a bit more active now in the last few minutes. I think he's been resting up here most of the day. And luckily for us, he is active. I am hoping he's going to come out of this drainage gully. So he's just trying to link to Chris, talking about buffalo. He's busy chewing a buffalo thorn branch. You see how he looks like he's limping a little bit. I wonder if he's got something in his paw. I'm gonna lie down there. Hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> Shame. So it doesn't even the most beautiful leopard always also pulls the face when it's on the toilet. There's one of the duck down. 
There's a bit of water here. Looks like he's going to go around it. That's my boy. It couldn't be a better morning. This is just too special. Wow, <laughs> what a way to start off. Bright colors and it attracts the insect to the flower, which is exactly what we're watching right now. This is so exciting. Good. Hi. Hi. You're the smallest baby blackback jackal I have seen in the wild. Look how full the belly is. <laughs> it is so incredible to spend this time so close to an African penguin. They just make me feel alive. That is incredibly sweet. Grooming each other. Play is vital. This is how they learn. This is how they would tackle prey. There you go, there you go. Heart is pumping right now. Look at this, everybody. Is that a live kill? There's nowhere to go. It's just such an incredible privilege to be out here. It just keeps on delivering. There she goes, going for the youngster. She got it. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that. This is insanely good footage. So the buffalo has moved further south. We thought we we're gonna probably just uh, backtrack a bit, just to make sure there's no lions on their trail. There's no particular reason why I would think that there would be, or there's no evidence really, but we know that often lions would trail them, especially the Telemartis. They, oh, I was a bit late there for that bird. BK just pointed out a bird there, and uh, I missed it. Yeah, it's a fight kingfisher. Oh, sorry about that, mate. I was looking in the drainage for some leopards. <laughs> BK is, says he's going to cut himself a stick and hit me every time I do that. All right, I'm not going to spend too much time at the dam. I mean, uh, we've done that quite a bit today. I'd rather use this time to try and find something before it's dark. Uh, the sun has gone behind a cloud bank, which has cooled the area somewhat. And that, that sort of makes me hope that uh, one of these leopards up here will start moving. <clears throat> Hello there, Ellison. Uh, mainly the males for mating rights. Uh, 
uh, females have small little alterations usually like we saw there when one is in the mud and she doesn't want the others to get close they might give them a little bump but not intense fighting it's usually just a little little nudge but proper fighting mainly the males and that's all for mating mating rights if you can put it that way remember they're not territorial so they don't fight for territories So um, the fighting with buffalo bulls is for mating dominance. <laughs> Temperature is actually quite lovely at the moment. It's rather hot when we hot ish not really scorching hot but right let's head to JP in the meantime we at his water roll Bushwalk. Yeah, at the moment the water hole is incredibly quiet. What we do have, however, is a number of blacksmith lapwings, which is very unhappy with a pair of strangers that are flying over their area. We're going to very soon see if they will actually tolerate the second pair in the area or they're going to actually chase them off. Seems at the moment they're actually quite tolerant about the strangers that has just moved into the area. I actually thought that the one pair actually might have had a nest. However, I've tried to go and see if I could find it. But the eggs are so well camouflaged and they're quite often laid between different animal droppings. For example, uh, between impala droppings. And they're also cryptically colored. That makes them blend in perfectly with soil as well as with uh, droppings and other things that they will litter around the nest. Good afternoon, Darcy, and welcome to the show. There's absolutely no water plants in this dam, unfortunately. I would have loved it if there was, because one of my favorites is actually water lilies. And quite often when you have a sufficient amount of water lilies starting to grow, you often have African chicana that will come into your area. And if you have areas where there's incredibly big plates of water lilies, you might even be lucky to find pygmy goose coming into that area. Meanwhile, let's just listen to the different sounds of birds in the background and see what else comes in, hopefully for a drink, the last few minutes. In the meanwhile, let's go and see what Jonty is up to. Okay, so we we have just looped around. Mareeps came to an area where we couldn't follow, so we've looped around. We're going to try and wiggle. We're going to try and wiggle in here and see. It's not looking too good, I've got to be honest. There's like a water 
like a little watering hole, a whole bunch of rocks. It's like the perfect place for him to give us the slip. So I hope he isn't playing with snakes again. I don't know if he could afford to have a swollen leg like that again. <laughs> I wonder, we were just yeah. debating what's making him limp like that. I'm just going to turn us. I wonder where that goes. I just want to see this road might just be a little access that we need, taking a little tot my chance. Uh, no. no, we're not going to be able to get in here. But there are some squirrels here. If they see him, they'll let us know. That's a good question. How far would they smell a prey species? Actually, I don't think I'd be able to give you a really straight answer on that. I mean, if they were following the smell of a carcass, then they could follow that quite far. But live prey, because that smell is everywhere sort of all the time. Um, so I'm not sure to be honest. I'm just going to check if Dion managed to get a view. Uh, Dion, did you manage to get a view that side? Yeah, he's uh, slowly making his way down the Chinese line now, um, almost towards you now, but he's still very visible there in the Chinese line. Uh, just stop the shelf guy. Okay, now he's going to lie down. Okay, copy it. I'll come and join you there. So the other vehicle has just spotted him. He actually, he didn't continue as we thought he would. He went and lay down. I'll tell you what, if we didn't have the ability to chat to other vehicles and use the radio, we would, you know, it would be a nightmare. We would lose stuff all the time. It's such a great tool to have. So, by the looks of things, there's a second vehicle joining, which would well, it'll be the third vehicle. So we'll just have to have a look and see how much space we've got down there to move with. It is a tight little drainage line, but let's see what we can do. Magic might just happen. Yeah, Tina, he is. It's such a great spot for him. This sort of habitat for leopards, these like drainage lines, little gullies with these thickets. It's perfect for them to hide. And obviously with the, the big dam right here, there'll be a lot of prey species coming into this area. Oh, what I'm hoping, Davi mentioned it, is maybe at, uh, as it gets closer to sunset, maybe he'll actually come up onto the dam wall. Lionesses. We had Darkman, of course, doing his best to protect them and to catch a buffalo for them for dinner. But unfortunately, as soon as the buffalo came along, he hot-tailed in the opposite direction. 
No, we're having a fabulous time and it's really been magnificent so far. Thank you. Cape Nature is the chief custodian of the Western Cape of South Africa's natural environment. This highly successful organization strives to conserve the province's natural heritage to ensure a sustainable future. Besides nurturing nature, Cape Nature offers an authentic ecotourism experience to local and international visitors. And one of these experiences is walking amongst the penguins at Stony Point, or as we know it, Penguin Beach. Wild Earth broadcasts live from here every day and is very privileged to be partnered with Cape Nature who have focused their conservation efforts here. If you want to visit these iconic black and white African penguins for yourself, then head over to our website to find out more. Cape Nature. Conserve. Explore experience. Hello Mama. Just checking us out everybody. There's no aggression here. Very relaxed. A herd of elephants moving around your car like that is truly, truly magical. Tune into Wild Earth every single day. It's in your nature. So we managed to just loop around and find him again. He's lying in the reeds there. So I'm going to try and reposition us so that we can get a clear view. I was just waiting for that one vehicle to move. So let's see, we might get lucky and get an unobstructed view of him. It's a little bit of mud down here, you definitely don't want to be getting bodgy wet down here. Yes, Darby, we might just get a shot of his face here. <laughs> Let's see. Is that... yeah. There we go. <clears throat> so finally we got him in the open. I'm just having a look with my binoculars if I can see anything on his paw that was making him limp. But you know, it could be something like a thorn or a stick or a stone in his pad or maybe he's just hurt, hurt his shoulder and he's now just limping on it a little bit. Dov and I were saying it's actually, oh look at that, when they look up like that, when the light goes into their eyes, it's really, really beautiful. Um, but you could see what we didn't see earlier, but he's got quite a distinct dark stripe right down his forehead. He almost got like a little mohawk. Yeah, Lisa, he's posing so nicely for us here. I must say, we're so thankful for those waterbuck who gave him away, because otherwise this would have all been missed. I'm actually just going to get my camera out. Because 
Because if he looks at now he's gonna get up. What a ledge. <laughs> Is he gonna jump over? Yeah, you can't see so much pink there anymore, hey? Oh, he's busy eating some... some grass. Listen, you need to come quickly. This thing's gonna move. Wow, would you know, this is a rare sighting of a very common animal. <laughs> and being rare that we only really see these guys at night. And I mean, if you drive around at quarantine with a spotlight at night, you'll see about a hundred of them. And this is absolutely special having it so close to us, not phased at all, and having a little early afternoon snack in broad daytime. A very rare opportunity for you to truly now see what this scrub hair really looks like, because most of the time we have them on the IR. So now you can see the colors and the fur the red ears. Looks like mine, eh? <laughs> this is sensational. Look at this. It's not bothered by us at all. And now it's eating. Look. <coughs> Now my question as I'm asking myself is, why is this hair out at this time? Alright, one thing it could be, one thing it could be that uh, it's we're along a drainage, uh, there's a lot of shade here. The sun has gone behind a cloud bank so it's going to get dark earlier, but this is still atypical for the species to be out now. However, when I was stationed in the Kalahori, in winter we did see them often in daytime, but that is easily explainable 
because those winters there are very, very cold, minus degrees, you know, so it's sub-zero temperatures at night. So they do take that opportunity in daytime to, to move around, especially on cloudy days. But here, it's not very common to see them out like this, this time of the day. Hi, Jamie. In fact, quite by chance, we was literally driving along and we were losing signal and just a little bit of the inner workings, I'm not going to give too much away, but um, our directors keep on updating us all the time where and when we don't have signal, even though we are not live. So I thought, okay, let's stop and then, uh, you know, see if we can regain signal and just check if all of our equipment is right, all right. And BK and I looked, and there was the rabbit. So it's totally by chance, actually. I think we probably would have driven right past it. I mean, even though on camera it looks like it's quite visible, but if you, you know, from where we are, you know, you could just as well have been a rock. And look at that. That's more or less what we see <laughs> without the camera. Look, even there, you, there he starts coming into picture somewhat. Absolutely magic. Look at that. Hello there, Annabelle. Uh, it's impossible to say from where we are. Um, uh, in terms of appearance, there's no way to tell me a male from female. The males are slightly more robust uh, and slightly bigger, but you'll have to see them both together to really be able to tell. It is, it is near impossible, and you will not see the genitals either from here. You'll have to physically catch the animal. And that nice fluffy fur there. <laughs> ah, hi, Bubbles. That is the question of the day, definitely. Right. Bubbles wants to know if spring hair and scrub hair are in the same family. All right. Answer is no, they're not in the same family. They're not even in the same order of mammals. All right, so a couple of days ago, we had this taxonomy discussion about order. So primates is one order of mammals. Uh, carnivores is one order. Um, rodents is one order. Now, spring hair, they are true rodents. They're rats with long legs. Whereas hares and rabbits are in their own order of mammals. And they're the only animals in that order. And that order is then divided into families. Right, so uh, that order is called the lagomorphs or lagomorpha. So therefore they're not related in that way. They possibly could be an earlier evolutionary sort of ancestor, but as we are today, or the extant species as we refer to, the species we can see today, they are not related. And that's a common misconception. A lot of people tend to think rabbits and hares are rodents because of the similarity in the teeth. But they're not rodents. They're in their own unique order of mammals. A little trivia for the day. And then if you look at the two different Types of lagomorphs, you'll have hares and 
rabbits. So obviously a spring hare is not a hare, it's a rodent. It's just because it's a rat-like animal that looks a lot like a hare, it got named as a hare. Not a hare, it's a rodent. But with rabbits and hares, the major difference is says hares usually breed above ground and live above ground. They don't have burrows. Rabbits have burrows. And some of our species here in Africa are caves or holes under rocks. And that also can be seen in the way that they, the babies are born. So bunnies, rabbits are born very helpless, blind for the first couple of days, no hair. Hairs, the leverets or babies can run very soon after birth and they're fully covered with hair, ears open, eyes open. Well, Marips will certainly enjoy this as a snack. So let's head over to John T and see if he's found Marips again. He was only alive, you got that, eh? <laughs> so Marips, I thought he was going to walk right out towards us, but he's found the spot. Luckily, we've got a clear view. I'm hoping he's going to move so we can try and show you because it actually looked... The last time we had a clear shot of him walking, it looked like he had a small wound. Oh, there's a lion calling. I don't know if you can hear that. It was very far away. So I, I just went quiet and I hope that you would hear it. It's very far away, west of where we are. Uh, but there was a lion roaring. But what I was saying was Marips actually has a small wound on his left flank. And I wonder if that's not linked to what was making him limp. That's quite cool when Darby pans out like that. You can see what a cool spot he's in at the base of a, a leadwood tree there. You wonder how many leopards have laid out underneath that leadwood. I'm still hopeful that he's going to come up and get onto the damn wall. <laughs> it's so, I'm so glad that there's actually a monitor because where I've parked, I can't see him. There's a tree in my way. <laughs> but luckily, Darby's in the money spot. Susan, more than likely, um, when they're chewing grass like that, it is generally linked to some sort of stomach ailment and often eating the grass is, it will make them be sick but he he had like he looked like he was mouthing it but it didn't look like he was too serious about eating the grass When he sits up like that, you're kind of just hoping that he's going to yawn. And get up and walk towards us. At this stage, um, she wouldn't really have a choice. She probably wouldn't want to. <laughs> You'd see at this stage, she would start getting quite aggressive towards him, maybe hissing and snarling, but he would actually go in and, and dominate the kill. So it's, a, it's not a cool age for the moms now because he's obviously still in her territory and every time she catches something, he will definitely go try and steal it from her which is very, sort of like the heart of cheek. 
you know, she's provided food for him his whole life. And as soon as he's bigger than her, he starts pirating her kills. So what will generally happen is less and less she will go, because I don't know if you've if you would have seen during the show, but when he's younger, she would go and call him and fetch the cubs and take them to carcasses. As they get older, she will do that less and less, and then she will stop doing it. So it would just be by chance if he bumps into her with a kill, then he'll go and steal it, and you'll find that she won't actively go call him when she makes a kill. Because the last time I was here, we saw them together, and even then, <coughs> she was, <coughs> excuse me, she was being very sort of pushy to push him away from her. She was even actually running at him down the road and snarling at him. And the, th the first time it sort of happens, you can see that the cubs have a real confused look on their face. They're like, Mom, it's... It's me. The lions are calling again. <laughs> That's kind of what it sounds like. So we are just going to sit tight here and see if Mareeps moves for us. Do you dream of travelling to a far-flung wilderness location where life continues as normal? A place where you can escape to nature and breathe. If you become a Wild Earth Explorer, then this could soon become a reality. Subscribe today and stand a chance to win regular travel prizes. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. something very very interesting I didn't plan this but this is a scene a rarely seen this is what we call a journey of giraffe so beautiful tune into wild earth every single day it's in your nature Hi, I'm Mike Anderson and I come to you live every day from Eco Training Pridelands Conservancy in South Africa. The wild animal I think is most underrated, I think buffaloes are the most underrated. They're so, t so tenacious and ferocious and also very, very protective of each other, which I find incredible. You know, sometimes people think of the big five, they just think of lions and leopards and other big animals. But I think buffaloes are pretty underrated. Catch up with the guides daily here on Wild Earth. I love being a cam up for Wild Earth. The animals coming right up close to you, especially like lions. Sometimes you get nervous, but you have to go with the flow. <laughs> My favorite animal to film is the elephant because of how big it is. But when it's really up close to you, it's one animal that you would say, I really respect you. Marips has got up and moved. Luckily, there's a road not far here. Uh, we're actually going to have to kind of. <laughs> Ooh, I thought that was him. 
We're hoping he's going to come out onto this road. So we might just wait on the junction here so we can see both both directions. So I'm just looking really carefully in here. We kind of get into that changeover, but you know the really good light's gone and we're getting into that dusky light, which is where their coat becomes even more ninja-like. <laughs> that is a taller. <laughs> I don't know if you go over my right shoulder and like focus sort of between um, no zoom back out I'm trying to see where you are uh, he's through that gap there He's there, I promise. <laughs> Let me go forwards. Why can't I see him on the screen? That's definitely... I'm just trying to match up the gaps that... Oh, uh, no, come zoom back out. Sorry, it's that gap there. Is that where we were? Yeah. <laughs> I can see him. Okay, let me try and go. F I actually might be able to get in here. Um, that question, sorry, it was, how big do I think Mareeps will grow to be? <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's a tough question, and whenever you work at lodges and you hear guides, they'll say, oh, this leopard, he's the biggest one the world has ever seen. Um, so I don't know. I really don't know how big he'll get. Um, the range for leopards to get to, it's pretty big. Don't tell me he's moved. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> he's walking back to the road. The range that they, they can reach, it's pretty huge. Um, you'll always hear guys throwing out 100 kilograms, but that is... To see a 100 kg leopard would be huge. Um, there he is there. So if he comes out, look carefully on his left side, just behind the shoulder. Um, that's where it looks like there's a, you see there's actually like a flesh wound. So I wonder, you know, it could be from another leopard, it could be a claw, or maybe he tried to take down a pig and it was from the tusk, or even an impala, like a kick, a slash from an impala's hoof could cut him like that. I think that's definitely what's causing his little limp action. Oh, look at that, that's like a little, it's like a clean slice. Well, while he's on the road, we will most definitely follow him. So yeah, just going back to what size, uh, yeah, I've got, uh, myself, I've got no idea. Andy, luckily, if he stays on the road like this, we'll be able to still spend some time with him while he's moving. 
so funny. I can see the tracker's footprints here. They, they walked in where we found him, but he must have just been hiding from them. It's interesting, I, I don't know the full genetics. Oh, something got his attention. But if he's got anywhere near the same genetics that Hazana and Tamba have, then he should be, reach a very decent size. Um, Hazana and Tamba are, are both really good looking leopards. So look, he's actually gone into stalk mode. I can't see, I'm looking through his binoculars um, to try and see what it is that's got his attention. This could also just be his youth playfulness still, because I mean he's not hiding, he's lying in the middle of the road. I'm just going to update the guys on the radio. Are there any stations still interested, <laughs> interested in this young male ingwe that's around Chitwa Dam? Obviously not. Um, so FC, no, I'm not, that's too far west of where we can go, unfortunately. FC was just asking, relaying a message from Chris, seeing if I was going to follow up on that line audio, but where it sounds like it's coming from. Unless they move, hopefully they will move during the evening and come further east towards where we are, but where they were calling, it was very far from us, I think out of our jurisdiction. If I could take you on safari all day and all night, I would. But unfortunately, it's not always the best time to see the animals. Now, in between safaris, you can watch the Wild Earth Channel with loads of extra shows. If you have a connected television, Apple TV or Roku box, then download the Wild Earth app. And if not, then just find it on the App Store on your phone. Wildlife trafficking remains a growing problem in South Africa and often made worse by the way the media portray this complex issue. The Wildlife and Environment Society of South Africa, WESA, have recently embarked on a program whereby they train reporters to better tell stories of wildlife trafficking. In my community, wildlife conservation is mostly something other people do and I would like to change that. My name is Iman Singhi. I told people I met that the pangolin is one of the most trafficked animals on the planet. But what is a pangolin, they said. Why is it in danger? This is what made me decide that the pangolin story must be told. 
If we are to play a part in preventing the extinction of this animal, then we must all be part of the battle. A partnership between WWF South Africa and WESA, supported by USAID. Our bodies are made up of about 60% water, which means that in a very short space of time, you can dehydrate completely. A relatively efficient way of collecting water early in the morning is to take an absorbent material like a sock and to walk through the grass absorbing the condensed dewdrops on the grass. Once the material is saturated, you can then squeeze it out into a container or you can suck it out directly into your mouth. My name is Lauren and I'm currently working in Juma Private Game Reserve here in South Africa. I love answering your questions during the live safaris. It's my favorite part. It feels like you're on the vehicle with me and I'm able to teach you exactly what you want to know. If you want to ask a question on Wild Earth, then you need to register on our website. Once registered, you must go to the live safari page and ask your question below the live feed. Right, so John T. mentioned he heard some lion and uh, we had reports that that might be far in the south. We're back in the northern parts. So what I want to do is I'm just going to stop on the next elevated area, a couple of hundred meters ahead, and just switch off and listen. You know, so we're going to do that quite a bit. So if that line's roaring, it's very likely the tracks of that male that was reported earlier this morning. The tracks only, and somebody somewhere must reply to him. And I'm hoping that we can then get a more or less of an idea of where the other lions are, whether it's the Ngumas or the Tillamatis. We'll um, actually let's stop here. This is a good area. And then while we listen out, just enjoy that lovely palette of colors. Approaching here at uh, Big Tip. Yeah, it's um, it's tricky with the lines lately. They, I'm not sure why they're particularly. Avoiding Juma, they don't know it's Juma. You know, it's, 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 these roads are, are merely means nothing to them, and I think it's just temporary. Good day, horse lover, yes. So at the moment it's merely audio uh, and we're not entirely sure. Remember we can hear them up to eight kilometers away on a wind still day. So they could still be in Juma's area, they might be just outside, even beyond, you know, it's, it's so tricky to put an exact distance to it when you hear that call. Especially here we have this very much sort of undulating country, this typical granite sort of geology that causes this like 
sort of rolling hilly type of terrain. A lot of drainage lines, so sounds don't travel as far. Hi, pig. Yeah. Well, it's not much of the sun, but still you get the colors. It's so lovely. Like they say, silence is golden, yet it's not silent at all. She's birds and everything going. Well, that was a lovely moment. Let's head over to John T with Marips, uh, who seemed to have settled a bit now. Yeah, he just got up off the road. We actually saw what he was looking at. There's a herd of impala um, that moved a little bit away. Um, and now he looks, he's in like a little hollow there. Looks like a spot where an elephant maybe dug out a root a couple months ago. I was just saying to Darby, the way he lay down now, you can see his tail's tucked under his front leg. I almost think he might hit a very hard relax here. Yeah. But it's been cool while we've been waiting here. Those lions have been roaring pretty constantly. The last roar actually sounded a little bit closer. Um, which is such an awesome sound to hear. You almost pinch yourself that we're sitting here with this beautiful leopard. And there are lions roaring around. This is awesome. Yeah, Zazu, I think he'll be fine, eh? <clears throat> it looks like quite a superficial wound. Obviously, there's a little bit of muscle uh that's sore that hence his limping but yeah he would be good to go Cute man. Samantha, the impalas will be. I'm just trying to look under his right eye. Is that a black? dot or is that like a bit of dirt or a tick they just punch in on that thing <laughs> a bit of sleep in his arm eh? 
Um, you know, impalas throughout their life will, will probably be his his main source of prey. And then as he gets a bit more bulk on him, a bit heavier, then he might be able to go for slightly bigger things. It is amazing over time what, what people have recorded them catching um, and killing. I can't remember if I mentioned it on the show before, but a friend of mine at Kirkman's saw a male leopard catch a young elephant, which sounds absolutely ridiculous, but uh, yeah, yeah he, he watched the whole thing happen. Um, guys have seen them with young giraffe, um, young buffalo. I saw, I've seen a, um, a male leopard catch fully grown in Yala, a male in Yala, which is pretty big, uh, like a sub, a two-year-old kudu male. Um, but all of those were fully grown, sort of fully mature male leopards. Um, I also did see a, a female leopard. I didn't see her kill it, but us, we found her in the tree with a like a sub-adult female kudu, which is pretty insane. Um, but yeah, I'd say once he sort of fills out and bulks out as big as he's going to go, then it's also up to the, the individual. Some, some leopards, like people, will be slightly more risk averse and some will be a bit a bit more ready to take on a risk so the bigger prey that they go for often comes with more of a a risk <laughs> that the one bit of grass is not doing him favours there. We just had the lions going again, but this time it sounded, sounded like one. It doesn't seem to bother Marie too much. Look how he's curled up there, like a house cat at home on its little pad. <coughs> so I wonder if he... <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, I wonder if he didn't have a look. The direction those Impala were walking, uh, so further south of us, so to the left of how we looking at Marips now, uh, a couple hundred meters away, there's a big open area, which I'm sure that's where those Impala are going to go. And I wonder if he's not just chilling out here, waiting for dark, and then maybe he'll go have a look up there. But he certainly, for now, looks like he's quite happy lying here. It's this time of day also in this area, I'm almost, I'm expecting to see a hyena any second come wandering along this road. Because we're really close to Chitra Chitra camp. Um, it's funny, like hyenas, that they'll often do an initial sweep around the camp at the beginning of the evening, and then they'll turn up again a bit later. Let's see if they can find any morsels.
When on safari, there is nothing better than an evening spent under the stars chatting around a fire with the sounds of the wild all around you. If you sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer, you can build your own memories by joining our guides for regular fireside chats. Subscription payments can be made by PayPal, credit card, and now bank transfer. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature. What are you doing? Are you trying out for the ballet? <laughs> now it's an itchy bottom. Up we get. Mom's coming. Everybody's moving off. My favorite animal is a leopard purely because I just think they are just the epitome of feline grace and power and the way they can move about in any environment and remain hidden until they want to be seen, I just find it incredibly intoxicating and they're amazingly beautiful. Catch up with the guides daily here on Wild Earth. The bushwalk feed allows the camera person some creative license. This is my favorite style of shooting. You have to be mentally and physically prepared. You're shooting handheld in some very strange and contorted positions, always with a straight back, often in the squat position, low to the ground. The creativity comes down to the relationship and sync you have with your presenter. The more you understand each other, the more you'll be able to tell the story seamlessly. Okay, so we have gone IR on Marips. I'm glad he lifted his head up just as we went live because he was looking pretty flat out. Makes a big difference. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad he's not looking for any more puff adders. Yeah, we're very fortunate, Marissa. I just love if you just watch, I'm not going to talk, but watch, look to his ears move. He's very much in tune with what's happening.
Now it looks like he's in tune with going to sleep. We're going to spend a bit more time here with Mareeps. You're going to head over to Chris, who's hanging out with an antelope. Right, these impalas are alarm calling here, so we suspect there is a cat somewhere. They have been alarm calling profusely, not in our direction, but a little bit. And uh, shame, and I don't think I can move. We are in a very unstable area in terms of signal, so we might actually lose out on an animal if I can't move. But uh, what I'm going to do is to try and just use the lights a bit and see if we can't at least spot something, but that will limit our range somewhat. And they've all run, and they're still looking in, in that direction. Although they're not too worried about it, it seems. No, they're still going. Now something's bothering them. Oh well, there's not much I can do from here at the moment. Hi there, Haley. Um, no, there's quite a number of animals spraying on Impala. And apart from lion and leopard, so cheetah, wild dog, hyenas, martial eagles take the babies, pythons. I've seen cases of caracal taking babies. Um, crocodiles. I've seen a baboon once take a baby impala. Oh, that's just to name a few. Seems like they've calmed down now. Yeah, we'll probably continue. I want to go back to the area where that leopard was this morning to see if there's not any movement there. As a naturalist, it's really important that I stay up to date and up to breast with what's happening in the wild and in the world around us. The Wild Earth app helps us do that and helps us stay abreast with the live interactions of animals every day. We're going to be here at Stony Point bringing you the African penguin story and we'd love to see you on the app. See you on the beach. Cape Nature is the chief custodian of the Western Cape of South Africa's natural environment. This highly successful organization strives to conserve the province's natural heritage to ensure a sustainable future. Besides nurturing nature, Cape Nature offers an authentic ecotourism experience to local and international visitors. And one of these experiences is walking amongst the penguins at Stony Point, or as we know it, Penguin Beach. Wild Earth broadcasts live from here every day and is very privileged to be partnered with Cape Nature who have focused their conservation efforts here. If you want to visit these iconic black and white African penguins for yourself, then head over to our website to find out more. Cape Nature. Conserve. Explore. Experience. There is clearly 
something in the vicinity around you that's drawn their attention. Yes, that meerkat in the tree is just the coolest of cool meerkat. But watch out how bad he battles when he comes down. <laughs> it would be like me climbing a tree, just better. I am an outdoor photographer, a wildlife filmmaker, and a conservation storyteller. Penguin Beach is going to offer us this really unique opportunity to watch and pick up on the smallest of details in the penguins' lives. It's going to allow us the time to really get to know these penguins well, get to know their story, and get to interpret the little finer details and share that with you with a live TV show and get you to fall in love with penguins. So Marips hasn't moved. He's just settled down even more. But we just have been enjoying listening to the evening bird calls that have started. There's some scops owls calling, some night jars. There's a hippo kicking off in the background. And all the while we're just sitting next to this beautiful sleeping cat. I hate that blade of grass so much. <laughs> yeah, there's always one blade. Um, not the way Mareeps has been looking, because uh, he's still got that cubby face. But there's certainly times when adult leopards stare a bit too intently, you feel... <laughs> you don't feel so good. Luckily, I've got skinny little legs, so it doesn't look like there's anything they can eat yet. If you had juicy looking calves, you might be in trouble. <laughs> but they do, <clears throat> there's a leopard that we um, the guys still see him, but I used to see him when I worked at uh, Mala Mala called the Asipita male. Um, he's a leopard and he, he can be very cheeky. Um, and I actually love spending time with him because you, you have to really work. You can't just sort of drive up to him and, and look at him. He really behaves sometimes very much like an unhabituated leopard. So you've got to take your time and be, he's the type of leopard where if you have people on the car, you've got to literally say to them, don't turn your head and make it obvious that you're looking at him. Like everyone's sitting, looking dead straight, looking at a leopard out the corner of their eye that's off to the side of the car. And he definitely had a very intense look on his face. <clears throat> and sometimes he would even sort of stand up and motion as if he was going to come towards the car and he would look straight at you or straight at someone on the car and uh, in those moments you would almost rethink things you just hear <laughs> coming from the back of the car oh the lions are roaring again I think, uh, yeah, I think they can based on in the area, but a lot of it will be 
simultaneous sort of smell and sight. <laughs> so what's made him get up now? I can hear there's male and parlor rutting, chasing each other around in the direction he's looking. That's what seemed to get him up. <laughs> yeah, Yolanda, I think it will. You could see it's in a spot where he would be able to. Oh, sorry, I'm just moving in the car. He would be able to lick that, and that helps keeping it clean, and it will heal quickly and he'll be back to 100% in no time. While we wait to see what Marips is going to do, you're going to head over to Chris. All right, well, let's hope that leopard does go up. I'm just back in that area where John had that leopard this morning on the Triple M boundary. Uh, that, uh, just checking if there's anything on that leopard, you know, never know. And according to what John T has explained, that the, the behavior was of such a nature that he thought there might have been another leopard in the area. So therefore I thought it might be a good idea to check it out. Maybe we get a bit of luck on that side and uh, hopefully we can find our own spots. It seems like the leopards are hiding from me lately. Steve, uh, I'm not sure if they get tick fever. I'm sure that's very possible. I mean, I've seen various other creatures who's had it. Um, I'm sure it's a possibility. Tick bite fever or similar protozoal diseases. I'm sure they can catch them. Uh, but I've, I won't. I won't know. I'd, I would probably drive to find out from veterinarians and so forth. Um, I'm sure when they also just uh, mammals like us, even though their systems are a lot stronger, so they'll probably get it in a very light form, if anything. That's what my guess would be.
Hi there, Marissa. She says she loves night bumbles. Beautiful scenes in nature at night. Yeah, I also like it. My only thing with night time is you can't track. You are working purely on luck. Whereas in daytime I can still somewhat use tracks to establish direction and so forth. Oh goodness, so here comes the Terminalias again. Oui, goodness. Sorry about that. Just went through a cluster leaf thicket and those things do. Give me some some high fever. Yo. Hello there, Kevin. Yes, yeah, they are in full green colors at the moment. I'll show you if I drive through some of them. Obviously at night, you're not really gonna get the true color. They're even flowering. They're starting to flower at the moment, and that's what's giving me the, my hay fever. In fact, in my 22 years as a guide, I have narrowed it down to specific species of plants that gives me hay fever. I've did a lot of trial and error and fortunately it just blocks my nose. It's not, I don't go into like full on anaphylaxis, you know. <laughs> I just get a bit of a stuffy nose and it's a good old uh, antihistamine sorts it out usually. It does make me sleepy though. Even certain grasses, I know when they come out and uh, with their inflorescence, it, it also funny enough. Things like cats and those things does nothing. Pollen and specific species of. My dad always says I chose the wrong profession <laughs> for somebody with pollen allergies, especially at this time of the year. Well, I learned to live with it. It's one of those things, and uh, it's there. I can't wish it away. We'll continue our bumble and hopefully we'll be lucky. We had Dark Man, of course, doing his best to protect them and to catch a buffalo for them for dinner. But unfortunately, as soon as the buffalo came around, he hot-tailed in the opposite direction. <laughs> now we're having a fabulous time and it's really been magnificent so far. Thank you.
go. There we go. Look. All three in one frame. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that cool? Oh, that is so special. That is exactly what we had been hoping for, is all three of them to come together and make the perfect little family portrait. I love being a cam up for Wild Earth. The animals coming right up close to you, especially like lions. Sometimes you get nervous, but you have to go with the flow. <laughs> My favorite animal to film is the elephant because of how big it is. But when it's really up close to you, it's one animal that you would say, I really respect you. Alrighty, we are continuing our bumble yet again. So far only a few impala, that's it. So I'm not gonna stop for them now. We want to see if we can get our spots, eh? Spots is what we want. Can't let Jonty get away with two leopards today and we not having one. No, that's not how it's going to operate, eh? There's a Steenbock, which I'm not going to frame. We want Leopard today. Or a chameleon. <laughs> I'll take a chameleon as well. Then Jonty can have his Leopards. Hi there, Steve. Uh, yes, I have seen a quarry busted. Uh, not at Juma, though. In a different part of the Sabi Sands. Uh, I have seen one, yes. They're quite rare in this part of, <coughs> of, of the Greater Kruger. But I have seen one, yeah. It's a huge bird. This is the heaviest flying bird in Africa. All right, let's, um, while I was referring to Jonty, let's see what he and Marips is up to while I try and find my leopard. <laughs> that is amazing. FC play a little joke on Chris because while we're sitting at Marips, we just spotted a chameleon. <laughs> Only joking. Um, <clears throat> but something got Marips' attention, and like I said earlier, I'm expecting a hyena to turn up where we are. So I don't know if maybe. That's what he heard, but since he heard it, he's had his head up and looking that direction that he's looking, that's where the sound obviously came from. So we have been joined by another vehicle. I can hear Impalas now. Uh, it was just two snorts. It's pretty cool, it's one of these electric vehicles that's next to us, which is amazing because while he's moving, I can still hear sounds, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it looks cool there, John. You could see in the Hmm, what is going on here? I'm just gonna have a look with the... Oh, there it is, there's a hyena. Yeah, look at that eye shine. Looks pretty sneaky Pete. Um, 
So Marip's deciding to move away from it. He's just laid down a little bit in front of us. So he might be, because of that wound on his side, he might be less reluctant to hang out and actually deal with the hyena. So there's its eye. Looks like a turn back, yeah. I'm just going to use, I don't want to shine on my reaps, but he's still lying. I, I, I know where he is, yeah, at the base. See his head down there. So he's still in the same spot there, where he moved to. The hyena's back on the road there. But now that hyena is looking <laughs> in the direction that it came from. Oh, and then mosquitoes. I don't know if you could see in the, in the infrared light there where Darby zoomed out, you could see all the bugs flying around it. I'm so glad we don't have the spotlight on because we'd be covered in insects now. I'm sure while Chris is searching for his chameleon, he's getting <laughs> plagued by bugs. Lily, I think even as he is now, he might, you know, that hyena, there's no food around and he's big enough that the hyena is not necessarily going to run in and try and kill him. If he had food, that's what the hyena's sniffing around for. It's sort of coming to just see if there's something that it could steal. And we've seen him before, even when he was much younger, standing his ground to a hyena. And male leopards are, are much more confident. Uh, and it's because they're bigger and heavier. They're a bit more confident in dealing with hyenas. But perhaps he just thought, no, I can't deal with this thing coming to harass me tonight. So he just moved off. After yes, I'm living with uh, Ingwe. Yeah, he's on the southern side of um, the demo or Chitwa. Yeah, I'm living well there. Yeah, um, yeah, it's space for In the belly. That's very cool. And that is a great amount of skill to identify that hyena from that quick little sighting. I'm impressed. Yeah, that is crazy, hey? How they've got like a switch. Go from being cute, cute, cute to danger, danger, danger. I've always dreamed of Africa since I was a little girl. And then I just decided, you know what? It's time to come. It's time to just live the dream. If you want to go on safari with a Wild Earth Guide, whilst honing your bush knowledge, and of course, featuring in one of our shows, then head over to our website. 
it is so exciting. You're able to see the difference of what you see on TV to how much work it actually is creating what you see on TV. The leopards, Mareeps. How could you not really fall in love with that cat? He's got such a personality, and you never know what he's going to do. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer, and you could be making your first ever on-screen appearance. It's about just being together and seeing and enjoying the animals and the great outdoors. It's just been a great experience. Certainly, if anyone's able to, dare to dream and come. Wildlife trafficking remains a growing problem in South Africa and often made worse by the way the media portray this complex issue. The Wildlife and Environment Society of South Africa, WESA, have recently embarked on a program whereby they train reporters to better tell stories of wildlife trafficking. In my community, wildlife conservation is mostly something other people do and I would like to change that. My name is Iman Singli. I told people I met that the pangolin is one of the most trafficked animals on the planet. But what is a pangolin, they said. Why is it in danger? This is what made me decide that the pangolin story must be told. If we are to play a part in preventing the extinction of this animal, then we must all be part of the battle. A partnership between WWF South Africa and WESA, supported by USAID. Hello, boy. You are a monster. And he's coming right up to us. Hello, boy. Oh, settle down. Settle down. He is very, very close. He's pushing his trunk against the car. You can feel the car moving. Hey, 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 hey. Stop that. Expect the unexpected here on Wild Earth Daily. Three weeks. Three weeks it's taken me to find this creature. I told you, I will find it. Gotcha. Can you see it? Even the, even the st <laughs> staff in Johannesburg is going crazy about this now. Right, there we go. Flap-necked chameleon. Uh, the only species found here in this region. And my nemesis for the last three weeks. And now I managed to get it. I was so excited when I spotted it. BK thought I saw eight leopards or something. <laughs> and you can see why it's so difficult to, to find them. I mean, okay, obviously we are on, on IR now, so you don't get the true colors there, but, uh, you know, it, 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 it seems a bit shiny, but it's exactly, exactly the same color as, as those leaves. It's a very green, mainly, mainly a greenish chameleon and one of my favorite reptiles. You see a little curly tail there at the bottom. Hi there, Barbara. Thank you very much. You're probably going to see now, we're going to start seeing them around every corner now. <laughs> <laughs> right, next challenge is to find one in daytime. How about that? Well, I'm going to do a little... I'm going to... I am going to do a little... I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to be totally honest with you. I'm going to GPS this. How oh, about that? And then come and look for it in daytime. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. 
That is exactly what I'm going to do. I remember we're on Zoe's road, but I'll just, uh, there's a big, there's a very big uh, Maruda next to us. Yeah, no, absolutely, Joanna. And I mean, the reptile sleep is also slightly different to ours. And it's just going to sit there motionless. Absolutely motionless. And then uh, if an insect comes within... Range, they zap it with that long, sticky tongue. Wow. All right. Well, that was uh, <laughs> Hi, Jeanette. I think we might actually run out of time for the leopard. We might need to postpone that until tomorrow. I'm just happy with my chameleon here. I'm sure everybody else is. <laughs> You never know. S couple of minutes left. Maybe a leopard will still surprise us. All right, so on that note, we've got about a few minutes left. Let's see if we can hit that real last minute luck. Come on, we're on a roll now, BK. We're on an absolute roll. Buffalo herd. Right, let's do that leopard thing, shall we? You can't even see that chameleon from here. I don't know how I spotted it. I just saw a leaf that was slightly out of shape. And bang, there it was. I am a very, very happy fellow. I've got my chameleon and I've GPS that uh, that spot. I'm I'm heading there first thing in the morning. I'm going there. We need to take a look at it in daytime. Then it's really, then you get the true color and you'll, you'll see. Hello, Mini. Yeah, I'm also doing exactly the same. Last minute leopard, last minute leopard. Well, if you don't, do you know what? I am that type of person. I'm not gonna go and cry on my pillow. Nice thing is tomorrow is another day. And 
shame. It's like when you've got guests who's on safari, they often have very limited time. And that's the beauty of being live and doing the live safari thing, is that there's always tomorrow, the day thereafter, next week, next month. We're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. So, uh, and that's the beauty of it. Whereas when you're on safari, often you only have a limited couple of days, three or four days. Oh, there's a gerbil, or was it a, it's like a gerbil. That was too quick for me, that. Right, quarantine is just up ahead. It's often leopards there. Shoulder. Somebody asked about the uh, terminalias, and we'll get back to them tomorrow morning. And stopping right there in the middle of the terminalia forest here. Yeah. And um, there we go. And that's. The things that gives me my that can't be rain, is that? It's probably just insects uh, or pollen. Anyway, what a wonderful day! Couple of leopards, lovely buffalo sightings, and the chameleon. Enough to make you want to join us again tomorrow morning for another live safari out here at Juma.